people actually respect you more when you say no. Because when you say yes, and it's a half yes, and you have to cancel later, or you don't show up at your best, or you don't give it your all, you're actually damaging yourself more than being respectful and saying, no, I'm not a good fit at this time. I wish you the best on the event. It sounds fantastic. Thank you for thinking of me. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the show today. We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. Don't realize all of the time sinks we have in our life. Just like we don't realize all the calories we consume or all the drinks we had. We always underestimate what's happening in our lives and we think we have this clairvoyance to see it. And with our clients, the first thing I hear when I, when I hear, oh, I don't have the time, is all right, let's do an audit of what your day actually looks like. Set a timer every 15 minutes and just jot down what you're doing and be ruthlessly honest if you wanna improve. And they'll come back to me with that journal and then I'll say, okay, now open up your iPhone and let me see screen time. And let's look at screen time, which is gonna be even more honest with me. How many hours do you think we're losing, we're not even realizing it, and then we're, we're saying, oh, I just don't have the time, I just don't have the time. We always have that choice. And for Johnny, the choice was simple, remove the TV. You know, we have, we have clients who are like, oh, I don't have the social life that I want. I'm not dating the people that I want. Well, how many hours are you watching Netflix? Oh, well, you know, I just throw it out at the end of the day when I'm in the red zone. Yeah, but that's time you could be setting up an online dating profile. That's time you could be sending out messages to all your friends to invite them to go do something on the weekend. Every minute you're spending there just sitting around consuming other content, right? Con instead of creating, consuming, you're removing that valuable time from the equation. And what we love about our older clients who will be in the room with some of our younger clients is they'll, they'll turn to them and say, man, I wish I knew this when I was your age because you don't get that time back. You know, we lost some money uh, over the pandemic, we gained some money after the pandemic. Money comes and goes, but that time spent pulling our hair out, freaking out, burning out, we're not getting that back to go on a long bike ride tomorrow. I'm not magically getting blessed with an eighth day, a second Sunday to, to enjoy. It's not happening. And those who ruthlessly prioritize their time are the ones who seem like they have it all and they can get it done. They've unlocked that success in their life. And you talked about this, the power of no. And this was something that I really struggled with as I was raised a people pleaser. I love helping others. It, it brightens my day when I can do favors and help support those around me. But it also takes a lot from me at the end of the day to do all of that. And it was very hard for me to say no to small projects, big projects. Oh, just be a guest on this. Oh, come on this show. Oh, can you speak on this stage? Oh, it's just a Zoom. And it's easy to get caught up in that and not realize that, oh, I did all these favors for everyone else around me, but I didn't get to the things that I needed to get done. I wasn't present for my fiance. I didn't get to actually enjoy my evening. So when it comes to saying no, if you're like me in the audience and you're struggling with saying no and prioritizing, what were the lessons that, that you drew from the book that could really help our audience? Yeah, I still struggle with it. So I think I wrote that section for me. And like most people listening to this uh, interview, the opportunities available will always exceed the time available, whether that's socially, you know, and you make some really good points. Like, okay, I'm trying to date and meet somebody, but my buddies want to go out with me every, you know, three times a week. Well, you could actually invest one of those nights to do something else. So it, almost all of life, unless you have no life, which, which is almost nobody, uh, is involves saying no. So a couple of things you have to think about, start thinking about if it's not a nine, it's a zero. So that makes it easy. But where a lot of us struggle, it's that fear of missing out. It's that idea that, well, it is only a Zoom call, but not everybody gets an opportunity to do it and they wanna pay me to do it, so should I do it? And you have to have a really clear internal sense of your priorities, like what matters to you. And I've got a whole exercise in At Your Best, the book that will help people focus in on what really matters, what actually doesn't matter. To, to run it through that filter. And then what I do is, uh, and I've trained my whole team to do this, 
is you let people down gently. Now, if you can say this with integrity, and usually I can, I would say something like, man, I would love to be able to speak at your event. Thank you so much. I'm honored you would ask me. In order to fulfill the other commitments on my calendar, I'm unable to do it. I really do appreciate you asking me. Thank you so much. Keep me in mind for a further opportunity. Sincerely, Carrie. Something like that. Now, well, many I'd want to say that with integrity. So if you really don't want to do the event, you don't have to say that. Then you can just say, thank you so much for the invitation. I appreciate it. Unfortunately, I'm not able to do it. Have a great day, Carrie. Something like that. But you know, you got to get good at saying no. And being Canadian, I think we figured out how to do it nicely, or at least we're trying to figure out how to do it nicely. The other thing I would say that trips up a lot of people and I talk about this in At Your Best, but I believe you have a maximum number of things you can do in a week. So this took me a long time to figure out. My number is 12 to 15. So a blank calendar, if most people look at their calendar, like look three months in advance, um, what do you actually have in your calendar? The answer for most people is nothing. Got nothing in my calendar. And you think, great, you know, December is going to be amazing. But the reality is December is going to be just as busy as September was, just as busy as October was, because by the time you get to December, it's going to be jammed with all these things, right? We drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. And in order to do that, you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you've gotten a lot of value out of this, make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends. I have a magic number of 12 to 15. Once there are more than 12 to 15 appointments in my calendar for a week, I am full. So if you look at a full week for me, about 80% of my time is free and unstructured. 70% of my time is free and unstructured at work. Um, why is that? Because I work in a creative role. And so I need that green zone to be protected. I can't fill it up with meetings. I know that if I go above 15, I get stressed. I get angry. I get frustrated. I get rattled. If I go below 12, I get bored. And then I start to create some chaos. So I know for me, the magic number is 12 to 15. If you become a student of yourself, you'll realize that two nights out a week is plenty. Or I can do three meetings in a row, but I can't do five meetings in a row. Or I need a 15 minute break, or I can't do all day meetings. So for me, Monday, generally speaking, in a normal non-book launch season is uh, free in the morning, a few meetings in the afternoon. Tuesday, I have no meetings. Uh, they have to go on the calendar with my permission. Wednesday morning, no meetings. Thursday or Wednesday afternoon, podcast interviews. Thursday is pretty much a solid meeting day, but it's only one day. And then Friday is open. Now you might say, well, that looks like a pretty easy week. Yeah, but that's why I can produce content that gets accessed over a million and a half times a month. Because otherwise what happens is, well, stuff inevitably breaks. And so suddenly some of my writing time got taken up because I had to solve this crisis or uh, somebody had a problem or whatever. And so you're gonna be a lot busier than you think you are. So under schedule yourself. And when, when I look at a week, like if you said, okay, a month from now, Carrie, can you X, Y, Z? I would look at it and go, oh, 15 meetings. You know what? That week's not good for me. I'm pretty full. Sorry about that. Uh, do you have another week where we could we could have that conversation? So I think we over schedule ourselves. And in this crisis, right? And I don't know when we're getting out of it, but it's going to be a while. But in this crisis, we then are in a place where we're always in crisis mode and we're always overwhelmed. So I would say, be a student of yourself, figure out your maximum number, and then once you hit 12, 15, 17, 8, whatever your number is, you're full for that week. Then you have to move on to the next week. I love that. The best advice I ever received on saying no that's been the most impactful in my life is to create three goals for myself every year. Write them down. And anytime I'm given a request, look at those three goals and say, honestly, does this move me closer to those three goals? And if it doesn't, politely decline. And my three goals this year have been to double AOC's revenue coming off of that horrendous year of the pandemic. It's been to travel more before I have kids. I'm gonna get married and I'm gonna start having a family and all of my friends who have kids are not traveling. So any opportunity I can have to travel, I was just in Seattle with a buddy of mine who happens to have two kids, was able to just barely get away for a weekend. He said, where do you want to go? I said, anywhere I'm in. And my third is break 80 in golf. Oh, that's a pretty big goal. <laughs> 
you know, I've broke 90, I'm working my way towards 80, and if it's a golf trip, it can sa solve two of those. And I have to be honest, like, is this actually going to help me double AOC revenue? Not make me a couple dollars by hopping on Zoom, not give another free favor in hopes that, you know, maybe in two, three years, this will come back. And that's allowed me to ruthlessly guard and prioritize my own time. And it sounds selfish at first. And I remember when I first heard it, I was like, man, that's, that's not a lot of stuff that you can really say yes to. And man, that's going to be really tough to be saying no. And since implementing it, people actually respect you more when you say no. Because when you say yes, and it's a half yes, and you have to cancel later, or you don't show up at your best, or you don't give it your all, you're actually damaging yourself more than being respectful and saying, no, I'm not a good fit at this time. I wish you the best on the event. It sounds fantastic. Thank you for thinking of me. I, that is such good advice. That should make the second edition of the book. I know it was just released, but if we have a second edition, that should make it. And uh, I'll give you a case in point. I read a lot of theology, given my background. And one of the top theologians alive today, he's 70 years old, uh, was diagnosed last year with pancreatic cancer right after the pandemic started. And I've had a conversation with him and you know, pancreatic cancer never goes well. And I said, what are you learning? And he said that I have spent too much of my time doing what other people have asked me to do. And what millions of us who follow him, his name's Tim Keller, wish he would do is write more books because he's one of the most unique voices we have alive on the planet today in his field. And to hear Tim say that just blew me away. And, you know, it gets in the way of your unique contribution. I love that idea of three clear things, whatever that happens to be. And then if it doesn't help you accomplish that, and you're right, people do respect you more. I just had to say no to one of those 20 minute Zoom calls for a friend who texted me over the weekend, like, hey, you know, we're gonna study your book. You wanna do a half hour, 20 minute Zoom call? I said, no, unfortunately, I'm pretty booked up, but thank you so much for studying the book. Really appreciate it. He got back to me like, we'll pay you X number of dollars. It was very generous for a thousand. I'm like, thank you very much. I'm, I'm going to have to pass. And ironically, you feel like, oh, could he use that money or whatever? But I think long term, the, the respect rises for you. And if that's a good decision, then you're going to be able to spend that time more valuably doing other things.